So as we talk about Athenian democracy, and we've gone through these different phases, this Hellenistic phase is um, really sadly kind of the last truly Greek phase. Because if you know your history through this period, the next thing to happen is Rome. Now, Athens is not happy about being controlled by Macedon, so they make a deal with the Romans. They say, overthrow um, Macedon, we'll help you, we'll supply Wealth will supply men, troops will supply uh, ships, will give you everything that we can to help you successfully overthrow Macedon and get these Greek kings off our back. And they do that, and they are successful with that, and they are rewarded with a certain level of freedom for a time. They're given the title Civitas Federati. Civitas Federati basically means a, a civilian, uh, a civilian government. It's a particular term within the Roman system, early Roman system. Um, now, what's happening is you have a tremendous cross-fertilization between Greek ideas and Roman ideas that have been going on for some time anyway. They're all Mediterranean. Uh, Alexander had been there. There's a lot of stuff going on. As we looked at in uh, Greek art and architecture, the Romans emulated a lot of the Greek art and architecture and, in fact, adopted a lot of the Greek gods. So you have a, a real affinity between these peoples, even though there's a different language. There are also a lot of similarities in languages. If you examine the roots of uh, Latin and the roots of Greek, you'll actually find a lot of common words. So which, by the way, is one of the reasons why you start to see some words having multiple definitions uh, because of this cross-pollination that goes on between the two groups of people. So all is well. Uh, Athens now becomes self-ruling again and actually goes back to kind of a democracy. But again, they are not truly a fully Athenian democracy because they are still under the, under the control of Rome. Then come the Caesars. All right. Uh, the Caesars create from Rome, no longer a republic, now it is an empire. And this whole idea of the republic, which is drawn from some of the ideas of uh, the Greek city-states, and particularly of Athens, with Athens' very representative sort of elements within their democracy, although by the time they'd reached the peak, they were acting on pure democracy, which again, we're going to talk about the Sicilian expedition, we'll see the downside of that. But um, this pure democracy uh, still had these representative elements, and the Romans took that and recognized that that was a greater strength, and, and it was upon that foundation that they built the Roman Republic. Then come the, the Caesars, and the Caesars become autocrats, become dictators. Well, they become emperors. So these emperors now say, everything under my empire needs to be fully under my control, and they tell the, uh, the Athenians, yeah, this whole status that you had as part of the Civitas Federati, um, that's gone. Now you're just regular Roman municipalities. You are just Roman cities. And you are now Roman citizens, which is a good thing. But you are now just Roman cities. Um, at that point, we see the end of the Athenian doc democracy. It has run an, an amazing course, getting increasingly democratic, more and more power down to the people, more of the people in charge coming from throughout the body based on their ability, not upon their birthrights, and uh, so many positive things that have shaped all of our culture. In fact, um, if we look at it, this end of Greek democracy, and we want to look at it in a negative way, um, bear in mind that what the, the foundation laid by the Greeks created the Roman Republic, and it is upon these two things that the American founders created this democracy, this Republican democracy, which is the most enduring in the world, in all of world history. Um, which, by the way, should be a sobering thought. Did you know that the American democracy is the oldest democracy in the world right now? There is no government on the world right now that has continued nonstop as long as the American. We always tend to think of the Americans as the young, the, the new kids on the block compared to the old European countries. Well, the countries may be, have an older pedigree, but their governments don't. Now, you could easily say that there were Republican elements in the British Parliament, which goes back before the American Revolution. Fine, I'll give you that. 
but they don't have a written constitution. So in terms of a country under a single constitution, which by the way is something that we did get from the Greeks, the Greeks were the ones that had this idea to actually write a constitution for their government. We are the oldest existing in the world, um, still practicing a um, constitutional Republican democracy. So we have a lot to thank them for. Um, but there is one thing about them that we have to look back on. I'm finally going to get to that last point that I wanted to make, and that is the downside of democracy. We think of direct democracy. Overall, when we talk about democracy in the world, we talk about it as a good thing. The democratic countries are the, are the good countries and, uh, and so on. Well, and that may be true, but democratic systems are not created equal. Parliamentary systems are representative democracies, democracies to a point, but they are not the same as a true republic. Um, and no matter how you look at it, the fact is that uh, direct democracies, where they are put in place, typically do not last, and they don't last for a reason, because it eventually turns into something called the tyranny of the majority. Tyranny of the majority. So in other words, the majority takes on a mob mentality, and that majority becomes its own tyrant. We saw this in the French Revolution. Uh, you'll see it in other places in um, throughout history. Um, where the, the majority takes on this mob mentality. Again, a democracy, if you, if you take the word from its actual Greek, work, uh, Greek roots, the power, people empowered or power of the people, that refers to a, to a mob scene, that refers to a riot. Okay, so democracy can quickly devolve into that situation. And the specific example quoted by some of the founding fathers is this Sicilian campaign. All right. In the Sicilian campaign, you have a, a couple of very uh, important, popular, um, charismatic individuals, Cleon and Alcibiades. Alcibiades is uh, a guy who really wants to um, win the Peloponnesian War, and so does Cleon. Um, and they have, they and others have this idea, but Alcibiades in particular is kind of looked at as the villain of this whole story. He, um, he decides we're going to take Sicily because if we can take Sicily, we can use that and leverage that against Sparta. Okay, that sounds good so far. But he decides we're going to go in with um, 60 ships, no hoplites, that was their, their heavily armed infantry, no horsemen. We're just going to take this small force, just try to go in, and we'll basically kind of do a soft takeover of Sicily. Well, that sounded good, but the another politician who thought it was a terrible idea said, fine, I will come in, but, but he also knew that he didn't have the power because the people liked the idea. This guy was very popular, he's very charismatic, so we got the people behind him to go for this sort of, this is the thing that's going to win the war. So he says, fine, you know what? Great idea, only instead of sending 60 small ships with just the, uh, just the people on the ships, just the rowers basically fighting for us. We're going to send uh, 10 times that much, 600 ships with horses and with, um, you know, hoplites, you know, thousands of hoplites. And we're going to do this huge invasion because he believed that if, he, if, he, if that became the people's choice, the people would say, well, no, that's way too expensive. That would be far too costly. We can't take that risk. Unfortunately, he was wrong. The people said, well, if you think it's a good idea, we'll go for it too, because we really are after this whole idea of beating the Spartans. And so the people, being roused by their passions, adopted this plan, which was actually made with the intention of causing the other plan to fail, now becomes the plan, and this huge um, army and armada are being sent to Sicily. Well, one mishap after the other, mostly in terms of uh, really poor, um, poor unity of command, people in charge who didn't want to be there, the people who did want to be there were fighting with each other. It was, a, it was a mess. And the final result was they lost their entire fleet and uh, tens of thousands of, sh of soldiers. It was probably the majority of all the military capability of Athens 
down the tubes all at once. Well, the few that survived and what was left in Athens that hadn't been dedicated to this program were able to hold on for a while, but this is really what caused them to lose the Pelop Peloponnesian War and be overthrown by the Spartans, which, of course, as we talked about, brought in the rise of the 30 tyrants and the events that followed. So in other words, it was the democracy forcing them to go into war, not just to go into a war, but to go into it in a way that was far uh, less sound and less stable than the cooler heads would have advised because the people made the decision and the people were driven by passion and their passion was ignited by a couple of charismatic leaders. And as a result, they lost and, and Athenian democracy was lost. So what does that all come down to? What does it really mean for us today? I think what it, what it tells us is that we can look at all this and we can be pleased and proud of our intellectual fathers, the Greeks, coming up with democracy and bringing us to where we are today. But we have to analyze it with open eyes. We have to look at the faults as well as the strengths. We have to look at ultimately the failure because pure democracy turns into mob rule, turns into tyranny of the majority. And that is the destruction of any state. I hope you got something out of all of this. Uh, I've enjoyed putting it together and bringing it to you. And uh, we'll see you with the next lesson. Thank you.